a uh, story today of a woman. Now, you know, we've uh, heard of this type of thing before, but this woman, it's got to be very rare. She went to the doctor after feeling a fluttering in her ear, and she thought she may have some sort of ear infection. It took her 24 hours to go to the doctor, and she actually told her story while it was happening. She, she had no idea what was going on with her, and it, well... Here's her first description while she's in the doctor's office. Well, they confirmed that there is something in my ear. She goes, there's something in there. It's not a moth. I am so embarrassed, first of all, because that's so gross and I'm a clean person. It's an uneasy feeling. There's something in there. And she's a clean person. All right. And the doctor said it might be a moth. And then said, no, no I'm no, clean. It's not a moth, but there's something in there. It's wiggling around. It's sexual. Said I'm clean. And she said it's not <laughs> sexual. Well, we don't. Sexual. <laughs> Get your guesses in. Well, there's right. freaks out there, man. Okay. She's not. She's clean. Well, she's she a, could very, be a clean she, freak. She's a very clean person. <laughs> is, it, is it one of your new nostril jabbers, Kelly? What's a nostril jabber? <laughs> I told uh, this earlier today. This is a very difficult moment for me. Uh, last why? night, my wife is doing something new. She took the tape off her mouth. She was getting some sort of an infection. It from irritates the, the skin. Irritation from the from the tape. Oh, she hadn't been using it just for the last week. Man. I didn't even notice. <laughs> I didn't. Even, I had no idea. Okay, but were, were her lips angry and red? Yeah. Well, yeah, like super chapped. Yeah, I guess so. But so she bought these things called nostril jabbers. And they're uh, that's what it says on the box. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know that their marketing is the best, but <laughs> no. nonetheless, she only paid six. Never heard those two words together. Six dollars for a pack of four. Small little device looks like a small horseshoe. Uh, it's the 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 consistency of it is like a like a mouthpiece you'd wear in football. You know, it's a real soft plastic. Okay, and it jabs right up your nose. Okay, like one of them rings. Yeah, yeah. The girls are all wearing like all the baristas. Exactly, <laughs> and. Uh, Last night, she said, you know, instead of hooking up to your machine, I think you might have some success with this. So I jabbed it at my nose mm. and slept with it, but I did not get as deep a sleep as I the, usually do. The, the, the theory behind the nose jabber is that it opens up your nasal passages yeah. the gets same this... way like uh, that tape would do over your nose. Yeah, I tried that one time before, too. So it's horseshoe-shaped. Small, very small. And then you put it right just there straight up. in yep, each. Just it, like that. And then it hangs down just barely, in between the just two. Just barely, yeah. Uh, and uh, I tried it, and it was it was comfortable. But I didn't sleep as well. I had a lighter sleep. I tossed and turned a bit. I woke up two or three times. and But my wife had said it, it gave her real success. But I don't feel as rested today as I usually do. And I think it's because I didn't hook up to my... I just have to have it. I have Daddy's Machine right there, as Chris Tim called Your it. lover. Yeah, my lover was right there. Where does one... A purchase. What aisle is that on? The nostril jab. She, she got it online. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. But I, listen, it comes in a pack of four. So if you want, you one, want one, I'll get you one if you want. Um, oh. I'm doing all right. Well, wait wise. a minute. Christmas is coming. So don't, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't buy just, anything. Don't buy anything right now. I won't. So anyway, that woman, you heard her. She said, I'm a very clean person. So it's beyond. It, it's beyond my mind that there could be a moth in my ear. But the doctor said it might be. It wasn't. They got the results of what it was. <laughs> It was a spider. It was alive. <laughs> a live spider. That it, sounds like the Blair Witch. Project. It does. It's very Blair Witch. It does. It really is. That's yeah. the end of the Blair yeah. Witch. <laughs> it was a spider. It was alive. <laughs> that's uh that's a very emotional that's an emotional woman at the urgent care who says that she is clean, damn it. And she did not expect either of <laughs> well, those. Well, it's not things. a moth. Well, no, it's a spider. Clean <laughs> got nothing to do with up it. Upper ear. Yeah, it went right down into her ear canal. Later, when she could speak more clearly, she said a lot of her friends are telling her this was an amazing moment that she caught on video when they ripped the spider out of her ear. Like a hundred other people want to see a picture of the spider. I wanted nothing to do with it when it left. Yeah, so small little black fuzzy jumping spider. Everyone's comments telling me I'm a really great storyteller literally means so much to me. Also, you guys blowing up the video, I'm in the creator fund. I have no health insurance, so all the money I'm going to make is going to pay for this bill. So I guess something good did come from sharing this traumatic experience with everybody, so... Thank you. People paid her on the creator fund so that because she has no health insurance and her bill was going to mm. be you know a few hundred dollars. I imagine was she an Olympic gymnast like Mary Lou Retton. Uh, yeah, that's a, she was. She finished. She she won the silver in '84. <laughs> so she has even less insurance. Right. So she has no insurance either, and they took the spider out of her ear. Uh, that's a YouTube thing, you know. You can go down a, a, a hole in YouTube looking at stuff. People getting stuff pulled out of their ears at the doctor, where they record it. 
videotape it. Yeah. And, uh, and see it. Yeah. And there are moths and bugs and, yeah. and, uh, pieces of cotton and all Ooh, kinds of stuff yeah. in there. In your ear. Yeah. It's I, very satisfying to watch. Yeah. Recently, somebody you watched Pimple Popper. Well, you. Uh, I've I've watched it some, but I can only take a little bit of that. No, oh, so yeah. nasty. I can never watch those. I could not. I had someone tell me recently they had their ear flushed out, and it really they loved it. I've seen that and heard people say that, but I always wonder if that's just online chatter to get. Well, you, a doctor did do it, it for him. Yeah, I went. Okay. I had a, a doctor do it twenty yeah. years ago. It, it's magnificent. It's like an eargasm. It's, exact, it's fantastic. My God, that's exactly how a friend of mine described it to me. He said, "Well, it was my this one time at Friday the Thirteenth camp. Oh, oh, yeah. We were on the drive. We were on the drive and making small talk. Yeah, just you know, I, <laughs> edibles hadn't kicked in just yet. Exactly. So <laughs> we're making small talk, and he said." You want some real satisfaction. Get your ear cleaned out by a doctor. Do it the right way with a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said like 10, 15 years ago, he, he wants to do it again because it was such a great. And he described it as an eargasm. And yeah. he said he could hear better, you know, oh, it, immediately. Um, immediately. Isn't that something? Yeah, because they, they flush it with warm water and it feels great. And mm. you hear these whooshing sounds yes. in your brain. I mean, yes. it's it's inside your head. He said it was mm-hmm. an experience like none he'd ever it's had. It's very before. soothing. And he's clean. He said, look, I'm clean. But you just lie on your side and get all this. Gunk comes pouring out of your ear in this little dish. Ugh. It's and he's, just nasty. Well, he said you should see the junk that's Nastiest in your ear. Nastiest stuff you can imagine. And it builds up in your ear. This woman gets a spider You didn't ear. ask for that, though, did you, Dan? I mean, they just did it. Well, because I, I was having trouble hearing. Right. You know, it's like I think there's something blocking my ear. And you know they do when you do a, a checkup. Yeah. You know, they, they can they see. Do the, uh, the, right, right, right. right. The yeah. tongue depressor up yeah. the nose. Yeah, yeah. And check the ears. Here's how Biggie's vindicated yet again. Uh, a woman has recorded in her Southern California home an Amazon driver delivering an Amazon box, first just throwing it up on her doorstep and then stomping on it for no apparent reason. And she wants the Amazon driver fired. I looked on my Nest camera and I just seen that guy just basically chucking the package to the door. And I saw him stomping on the package. I really want to know what he was thinking, like why he decided to do all that. Biggie says Amazon is the worst at delivering stuff, that FedEx and UPS are much, much better. Uh, is, is FedEx oh, there's is, a hierarchy for Biggie. That's the one. FedEx is the best, right? Nope. Hell no. No? <laughs> no, we've done Hard, this before. Yeah. They Which are one? the bottom. Which one is the best? UPS. Big Brown. UPS. Big Brown. UPS, Big Brown. top notch, yeah. way above. I yeah. think even FedEx drivers have called in and said you're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So to me, bottom, FedEx. Yeah. Uh, those are the guys I've literally watched pull up to my building open the back door and throw something out of it into the hallway. That's what this guy did, but he's Amazon yeah. now. He's an Amazon. Uh, Amazon. No good. It's not not good either. Um, I think, you know what I've realized? I've been thinking about this a lot. Yeah. I think growing up, we all thought of like package delivery like as a big deal because it was a big deal. Right. Yeah. And now it's all the time because mm. everyone gets everything delivered. Yeah. But it used to be like, man, that's a special person right there. Right. Delivering a package. Now it's, you know, whoever wants to do it can do it. Agreed. You it's, know, UPS it... used to be, UPS used to be from what I understand, like you would have to start as like somebody in the warehouse mm-hmm. and it worked. You worked for years to work Before your you way up to, a to truck. get Loading a trucks. truck. I always heard a UPS driver is a really good job. Good, yes. You know, good money, good benefits. And, mm-hmm. and maybe still probably still is because I'm they sure, do a nice yeah. job. They, they really monitor But That's them. why I think UPS is above yeah. everyone. I think you really have to earn it. I mean, Amazon, you go in, you hand them a license. As long as you're clear, mm-hmm. they'll throw a vest on you and put you in a truck. Well, the woman is asking, like, why Why did he do this? You know, he just threw it up on the porch, which is one thing. But then to stomp on it, apparently, was just in a bad mood. She could have complained about him. No, she didn't. She, it was There was no reason for him to do that. So then she complained because she has it on her Nest camera. It was a $350 router is what she had inside. How pissed. They uh, replaced it. Amazon is going to replace Because she had video. And so Amazon has replaced the $350 router. And she says, well, I want more than that. I want this guy fired for doing something like that. I mean, it is the one job. You, the one you're, thing. You, and you're never going to know because I complain every time they mess something up at Amazon. Yeah. Every don't. time. And it, now I have a joke with them where I'm like, I'll just talk to you again next week. Oh, you say that. Uh, oh, yeah. What a burn, man. Yeah, I like that. Oh, mm-hmm. man, you got it. Well, because it's the same spiel, because mm-hmm. they're copying and pasting from whatever the Amazon yeah. handbook is. Yeah. You know, they're like, we're so sorry to hear about this, and mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it's like, so, but they don't ever follow directions. They leave packages basically out in the open where they can be stolen. Right, yeah. And they love to, you know, they say it's in the mail room. Well, we don't even have a mail room. They right. just, you know, that it's yeah. that kind of stuff. It's a different, yeah. Yeah, it's different. but it's always Amazon and FedEx. UPS is like right to your door. Mm-hmm. You know, here's the tracking. 
they say hello to you. Yeah. You know, my I know my UPS guy. He's a great guy. You like it, but mm-hmm. much, He's much better. He's a nice than guy. Him. You know, this is uh planes, trains, and automobiles now. And by the way, the uh the plane story has to do with that new way that United is boarding passengers and how passengers feel about it. They've just started, you know, they're boarding the window seat first, then the middle seat, and then the aisle seat, which to me makes perfect sense. And people are reacting to it now and what they think of it, which I'll tell you in a second. I thought Chris Dim said something interesting yesterday. Uh, we have a coworker named Squidward, mm. and uh, this is a great observation. Dave, you'll agree. Squidward drives. I don't even know. I never keep up with who drives what. I you never. Don't. I don't know that stuff. You know, par- cars sit in the parking lot, and people say, "Who? What?" You know, asked Dave about his Buick, which he hadn't driven in. I thought you drove that. Uh, years. Buick's been gone for years. I couldn't tell you what you drive. No, I fixed it up from the bullet holes, and then I uh, got rid of it. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you got shot in that Buick. <laughs> Give me hey, credit for knowing that Buick saved your it life. It did what it, it did. What it was supposed it to did. do. And you had the windows down. It still <laughs> saved. Did. The door saved you. That's right. Anyway, the other night we had a trunk or treat event, so every car had to be moved out of the parking lot because everybody parked there. Well, now when I move my Acura, we all know there's an enormous pile of uh, oil. She leaks oil okay. a lot. She leaks all Ju- the time. Just had it inspected, and the inspector said, oh, my God. I never, it was like an oil rush back there. I never mm-hmm. seen anything like that. He, he put three quarts in it for me. Well, she must have been low. She was. She had, Well, most of it was in the parking lot. <laughs> but I noticed that the space next to me also had a lot of oil in it. And I said to Chris Dim, because he knows, I said, who drives that car next that parks next to me? And he said, it's Squidward. Now, Squidward is young and hip and good looking and gets all the girls. Right. And I said to Chris Dim, oh, you know, haughty. Well, he leaks much oil as I do. Well. And Chris Dim says, that's not oil, that's Riz. Riz is going <laughs> out. That boy, that boy leaves it behind. It just oozes out of Wherever the boy. Wherever he goes, he <laughs> leaves it behind. So what you got is a, a short for charisma. Yeah. Uh, that's a, I have oil. That's not motor oil. Uh-uh. That's, mm-hmm. that's Riz. Okay. You want that leaking. <laughs> With a similar, yeah. You wish. I wish I had that leak. And then I said, well, maybe I'll claim that for my car. He's like, son, you can't get, you're going you to say you got Riz leaking out? You know what I mean? Riz leaking out of you. Where is your fleet of cars? Because... <laughs> I had to put it back in the driveway. Empty out I had to put it back in the driveway. Is that what led to you and your wife fighting over the garage? Yeah, we we because I had to park. I could, there's no place to park. Everything is connected. That's why we had to clean out the garage so it could put one. Don't worry, I'll have I'll have my fleet. Put back the motor in, pool back. I'll have I'll have the fleet back out there by this time next. At least week, park sure. it in the corner. Of course, well, I'll have I'll have it out there in my usual spot. Anonymous, you're talking about FedEx drivers. Biggie doesn't like them. Go ahead. Yeah, I work at FedEx and um. That if they will hire anyone with a pulse to drive a truck because they're contractors, they don't work for FedEx. And we laugh at work because we'll stand on the corner of the building and uh, watch them drive by, and you'll see them rolling a blunt on their knee, blasting rap music with the N-word blaring in it out the window as they roll by. They have no desire to perform well. Wow. Mm. Biggie's got this one exactly right. You are exactly right on this. Rolling a blunt on their knee while they're working. Man, one handed <laughs> FedEx, FedEx yeah. workers don't want to get stuff delivered from FedEx. Oh my gosh, <laughs> they go through UPS. <laughs> one handed mm-hmm. roll of a blood that's pretty good. It is a skill, it's not a good uh, skill. Uh, thank you, Anonymous. Point. No, I guess you can't make money with that skill. Thanks, Anonymous. Appreciate it. Mm. Uh, United Passengers, so far, they've announced that uh, new boarding method where they board the was it start November 1? Yes, they're boarding the uh, the window seat first, then the middle seat, and then the aisle seat. And so far, United passengers are furious with the implementation of this. They've uh, done it with a few flights oh, to test it. And the passengers have said, this is awful. Why? If, if this goes nationwide, I think it's just because they don't want change. I, that, it doesn't make Is it, it because that you split up your, your, your yes. group, your yeah. family? But only for a couple of minutes. Exactly. And then you're together. It seems like a, a great idea to me. Uh, they say that, you know, the big complaint was that window seat passengers had first dibs on the overhead bins. But somebody always has first dibs on the overhead. But, you know, it's not, you know, somebody's got to get it. And, and I think most people want to sit in the aisle. This is a little bit of an advantage to sitting in the window. You, you get to put your uh, stuff in first, you know? Yeah, I think usually, though, when you make your reservations online, you can pick your seats a lot of times. Right. And most times, rarely do people pick seats way in the back. Um, so if you buy them up front, mm-hmm. then if you're on the aisle, but not in first class, but in the main yeah. cabin yeah. in the front, if you've got the aisle seat, you're going to be loading up late, and you're not going to That's you're not going to have any room up in the in the thing. And then if there's two of you and you're both in the back, and if it's a three seater, your your partner there on the other side might just uh, 
they might have to check their bag. Yeah. So you got one person checking a bag and, and one person, person that doesn't. Not. Yeah, that would, that's right. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and it's still a mess. I don't care who the person is that you're loading up your seats with. You still got to walk together in that damn line and stand there mm-hmm. waiting while people sit down and put their crap up above their, their yeah, but heads. What, to me, this is the best system because you don't have to get up to, twice to let the, like if you're on the aisle and you know, you're sitting there and then five minutes later somebody comes in and says, well, I'm in the passenger, the, the middle, so you got to get up. You know, dis- I think loading with your party is a lot more important than getting up. I I just don't see it. I, Unless I you're thought traveling a, by yourself. I thought this was a great system, honestly, because it, it's just so much more ease in getting in and getting out. So you think what? Because like I think you said, they're rolling out nationwide soon. Yeah, November first. That's right. Uh, will it be a thing in a year, or will they dump it? I think they'll keep it. I think it'll work. I think people are just. I a lot of times I just think people if it, if something is new they go what how can yeah you change can, is you know, can be hard to accept thing. sometimes I think if you get used to it right, exactly I don't like change but never I, have of course I don't fly much this would be just fine with me it wouldn't bother me Tracy you're talking about airline boarding so far United passengers are kicking back on their new plan go ahead yes good morning gentlemen P one here love your show always oh, thank you so much. So check this out. So I'm not a fan of, you know, what United's actually doing. I just kind of think it's a little bit much. However, when I visited South Africa a few years ago, um, I flew into Johannesburg, and they actually board the plane from the rear forward, Mm -hmm. which I think is amazing simply because you don't have people clogging up the aisles or anything to that effect because they're trying to squeeze past everyone else from the front of the plane forward. Once I got to Durban, oh, maybe it was Cape Town, on, on the way to Cape Town, they actually split up the boarding to where they board folks that are like in rows A through, I don't know, um, maybe G or something mm-hmm. from the front of the plane, and then someone else from like, you know, H through V, I guess, or whatever it is, from the rear of the plane. So they have two separate boarding areas ah. where you can actually come onto the plane. So nobody is jammed up at all. There's not this issue regarding overhead bin space or whatever. And not everyone is trying to come through one door down the same aisle. They're actually boarding from the front door and the rear door of the plane. And it was so much, it was much more efficient. Now that makes good sense. I, mean, we, I think pe- a lot of people... You know, flyers has said that's the most logical way to do it. Back to front, back to front, or use both doors. Obviously, back to front is but a way expense. to go. Of course, is it, how's it expense? Because you've only got one jetway going to the to the plane. You have to have two jetways if you do. Or you that. have that rolling stairway. Yeah, or the rolling stairway. And you get on there, you know, Beatles style. Thank you, Tracy. But and back back to front is easy. I mean, that's just that's just yeah, common, that, that's that common works. sense. That's that works. Just, that's just that makes perfect sense. But to you me. still have to. But you you still have to put the first classers on first. And yeah. the families. Why does first class get on first? Because they, they paid pay a lot of a money lot for those two tickets. But there's to me, it's no. They need their alcohol. <laughs> it, it, sit. Hot towels. Yeah, I mean, I I'm not. If I'm in first class, I'm not paying to go on with the uh, the rest. Yeah, I'm not going to go with you, cattle. But don't you? <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point in being first class is to be like, oh, my turn. Yeah. I don't. I don't see as getting on the plane first as an advantage. You know, you still have to just sit there. You're just sitting yeah, while everybody's uh, bored. But that's you want. You got a drink and food. You get, you get served, yeah. uh, and you want to be sitting there when all the normals walk by. So you can uh, yeah, so you can look at him and be like, keep on moving. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Don't stop next to me. Don't you side eye me? Yeah, they are yeah. always on first. Aren't yeah. They? yeah, always. I've, yeah, I've, that I've will never, never change. Done, I've never done that. Yeah, while you're back there fighting for your luggage space, you know, yeah. your overhead space. Yeah, they're, they're up there with champagne with those yeah. nice comfortable. That Seinfeld yeah. episode handled that perfectly. That's exactly oh, absolutely. how it is. Yeah. Yeah. it's a battle. It's a war zone back, back there. Back in the yeah. back. Oh, yeah, yeah, in the main cabin. Steve, you're talking about boarding the plane. So far, people don't like United's new way of doing it, which is uh, window first, then middle seat, then aisle. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, Kelly, I don't really have much to say about that, but I do believe that checked bags ought to be free, and any carry-on bag you ought to have to pay for, because those are the things that slow everything down. The carry-on bag, plus there's the the carry-on, you're right. Yeah. And everybody wants to carry it on so they don't have to wait for the check. What we need, Kelly, is your son when he transfers, if he is able to transfer to North Carolina State University, Mm -hmm. get his degree in engineering and re-engineer our planes so there's more overhead bins. Yes, so you get more space. If you could change the design of the the cabin, it it. wouldn't be as much of an issue. Thank you very much, Steve. Appreciate it. Because they're built for the old style. 
And if your son doesn't do that, he can load the plane downstairs and make sure the bag's get in the right spot. Well, he's going to do one or the other. At RD. I can tell you, he'll do <laughs> one, one, one. Two flashlight he'll guys. Do, well, he'll be, uh, he yeah. does it, but he well, doesn't. I don't know if I want to trust that. I don't want him on flashlight detail. <laughs> but he does Wait it, a minute now. But he does it in Raleigh. Uh, hold it now. You don't, you don't how, trust him to guide a plane? I don't know if I want to do that. No, no. No. How would you say that you managed to crash the plane into the terminal? <laughs> I was spelling my name. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you park your car today, let, man? Let's not, Over there. Uh, oh, let's not do that now. <laughs> spelling my name. Hold it now. Let's not give him too much uh, 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 credit for this. We don't want too much responsibility. Rosebud, one more call on it. A plane and how to board it. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Good morning. P1 Salisbury. Thank you. Always a pleasure to speak to you, fine gentlemen. Uh, three quick things. One, you hit the nail on the head. People don't like change. Right. Right. Uh, two... People don't want to. People don't like being told what to do unless they're okay doing it. Yeah. And I think United Airlines has taken the military model that says when you get on a bus in the military that I've done for all of my entire adult life, you go straight to the back of the bus, you get in the seat, and you slide all the way up against the window. That's... If you try to sit in the middle of the bus in yeah. a military bus, about eighty-seven guys are going to be in your butt yelling and screaming at you to get to the back of the bus and sit up against the window. And then you fill it up from the back to the front. There's no question. I that's, didn't know that. That's the best way to do it. There's no doubt about that. Certainly back to front. I like this, the way they're doing it at United, but so far it's got back. And you're a back to front wiper. I yeah, am. what's up with that? I'm always, <laughs> I'm back to front in everything I do. Back yeah. to front.